Welcome back everybody to Bernoulli's Principle, Conservation of Energy. I think it's like a great way of thinking about it. Uh, Bernoulli's equation is an equation that brings together pressure, speed, and height. The faster water is flowing, the less pressure it will exert. So it's a little bit it's a little bit counterintuitive, but the faster it's going at some point, usually that means there's gonna be less pressure. Okay, similar to the conservation of equation. Okay, so here is the here is the long formula here. There's a lot to see, but we have a pressure at one point, and in this example, it's right here, is equal to it's kind of interesting. This is kind of we could think of it almost as like MGH, but this is the density of the fluid, gravity times how high above or below it is, okay? And then we have one half density velocity squared. You could even again think of this as one half mv one squared, but instead of m, we have the density of the fluid. So it kind of looks like the conservation of equa uh, conservation of energy equation. Um, you can look at this video. I would recommend it to see where this formula comes from, and it'll help you with that. Okay, let's do some uh, example problems. Oh, this is a demonstration. Good demonstration. All right, water is flowing through a uniformly curved pipe with the same area throughout. Rank the flow speed from least to greatest at each point depicted in the diagram. Okay, so we want to know which one is it going faster, which place is it going slower. Okay, so the actual the answer is the speed is going to be the same throughout. And the reason for that is because since the area is the same all throughout this uh, tube or whatever you want to call it that means that it needs to be the same throughout if not I mean there'd be a vacuum inside of here so that wouldn't really make sense okay so it's the same the speed is the same throughout okay okay so let's look at this example water is flowing through a curved pipe that gets more narrow as it goes up what can we say is true about this diagram okay so let's look at this uh, the water gets faster as it goes to B there is less pressure at B the water gets slower at B okay so one thing we should know for sure is because the mass continuity continuity <laughs> principle we should know as the as the area gets less and less it's going to be getting faster and faster so this is correct and we know this is wrong but we have to also know if this is correct or not so we have to figure that out so what we should know is about the conservation of energy equation. We have um, we have this formula here, uh, and what we what we can now think about is the pressure. So gravity height two plus one half p v two squared. So we know that this velocity that's going to go up. Okay, sorry, that's going to go up, and we also know the height is going to go up. So if these two go up and these two need to equal each other, that means this pressure here needs to go down. Okay, so it's going to be both A and B. Hope that makes sense. Uh, moving on. Okay, so let's look at this example here. Water is flowing through a uniformly curved pipe with the same area throughout. Rank the pressure from least to greatest at each point depicted in the diagram. Okay, so let's just kind of look at the conservation of energy equation. Um, we have it something like this, and this is equal to pressure 2 plus density of the fluid, gravity H2, plus 1 half mv2 squared. Okay, so something that we should know and we learned about is that water is flowing at the same rate all throughout uh, this diagram. Okay, so the velocity here never changes. We're looking for what the pressure is throughout um, throughout this motion, we know that the velocity stays the same. However, the pressure here is changing. Uh, something else that's changing is the height. What we notice is at point A, it's going to have the highest amount of height. So if the conservation of energy, you know, says that needs to all stay the same, and the height is increasing over here, that means the height needs to decrease over here. So the higher it is, that means the least amount of pressure it's going to have, okay? Because velocity is not changing. So in this case, A is going to be the highest, then D is going to be, uh, A is going to have the least amount of pressure, then D, then B and C, okay? So it should look something like that. Okay, moving on. All right, let's look at this example. 
Water is moving through a pipe with an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. Let me just underline that. Starting from the ground, the pressure inside that particular point is 220,000 pascals. The pipe's height at point B is 3.5 meters. The pipe's area at point A is 0 0.004 meter cube. And the pipe's area at point B is 0 0.003 meter cube. Uh, density of water, 1,000 kilograms per meter cube. What is the velocity of the water at point B? Okay, so let me just kind of put everything that we know. We have the area here. I'm going to call that A1 is equal to 0 0.004. The area over here, I'm going to call that A2, is equal to 0 0.003. Uh, the pressure here, I'm going to call that P1, is equal to 220,000 pascals. And this height here is 3.5 meters. I think that's everything. Great. What is the velocity of the water at point B? Okay, great. Um, we're just going to be using this old formula here. Uh, the mass continuity formula. So let's just plug that in. 0, 4 V1 is 5. Uh, so I should have this. 5 meters per second. Great. And this is equal to 0 0.003 V2. So let's figure out what V2 is equal to. Okay, I'm going to put this in my calculator. 5 times 0 0.004 divided by 0 0.003 which is around 6.67 uh, meters per second. Okay, so that means at point B over here, going 6.67 meters per second. Great. Part B is what is the pressure at point B? Okay, so this is where we're using Bernoulli's equation, pretty long. So pressure 1 plus density of the water, gravity times height 1 plus 1 half density of the water, velocity of the water squared initially, Pressure 2 plus density of water, gravity height 2, plus 1 half density of water, uh, velocity 2 squared. Okay, so let's just plug in what we know. It's going to take a little while, but that's kind of how these are. We just got to take our time. 1,000, gravity 10, height is 0 at the beginning. It is on the ground. Plus 1 half density of water is 1,000. Velocity of the water at this point is 5 squared. So this is equal to P2, which is what we're looking for, plus density of water, gravity, and the height, which is 3.5, plus 1 half density of water, 1,000. Ooh, almost running out of space here. 6.67 squared. Woo, did a lot. Okay, uh, let me plug in everything I have on this right side. 5 squared times 500 plus 220,000. So we get 232,500. It's going to be equal to P2 plus, and I'm just going to combine all those, 6.67 squared times 500 plus 1,000 times 10 times 3.5, uh, which is going to be... 57,244.45. So P2 is going to equal 275,255. 0.55 uh, uh, pascals. Whew. Yeah, these take a little while. All right, great. Hopefully you guys got that too. All right, now let's look at this one. I believe this is the last one before the next uh, next section. Uh, water is flowing through a pipe from area one uh, to area two. The diameter of the pipe in area one is point zero, uh, point 0.8 meters. And the water is moving at a speed of three meters per second and exerts a pressure of 250,000 Pascal. Area two has a narrow pipe with a diameter of 0.4 meters, a pressure of 175,000 Pascal and is 0.9 meters above the ground, okay? Uh, what height above the ground is the pipe in area one? Okay, interesting, interesting. A lot going on here. So first, we don't know what the area is. So I think we're gonna need that to find the speed. So we're gonna find the area of each of these. So area, the first one, 
We should know area is pi r squared. Uh, they give us a diameter, so we're just going to cut that in half. So for area of the first one, I'm going to do 0.8 divided by 2, which is 0.4 squared times uh, pi. So that's going to give me 0 0.5 meters squared. Area of the second part is equal to 0.4. Okay, so 0.2 squared times pi uh, is equal to 0. Point, um, I'm going to be 1, 1, 2, I'm just going to 1, 2, 6 meter cube. Great. So now we found the area. Now let's use this to find the velocity. We know a1 v1 is equal to a2 v2. So 0.5, which is going 3 meters per second, is equal to 0.126 v2. v2 is 0.5 times 3 divided by 0.126, 11.9 meters per second. Great. Um, okay. Do, do, do. Now let's put that long equation in here. P1 plus density of water, gravity height 1 plus 1 half density V1 squared is equal to P2 plus density of water, gravity height 2 plus 1 half density of water, V2 squared. Okay, let's put that all in. Uh, the pressure, uh, and the water is moving at 3 meters per second, exerts a pressure of 250,000. Okay? So we have 250,000 plus uh, 1,000, that's water, gravity, the height, H1, I think that's what we're looking for, plus 1 half density of water, 1,000. The velocity at the beginning, it says, is 3 meters per second. So 3 squared. Uh, this is going to be equal to P2, which is 175,000 plus 1,000 uh, gravity 10. Height 2 is equal to, to, to 0.9 meters. Okay. And this is plus 1 half density of water, 1,000. Velocity, we found that is 11.9 squared. Whew, almost ran out of space. So let's try to <laughs> consolidate this a bit. All right, 9 times 500 plus 250, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so 254 uh, times five, uh, 500. Oops, put one extra zero there. Uh, plus 10,000 H1 is equal to, and I'm going to put all this in, 11.9 squared times 500 plus 1,000 times 10 times 0 0.9 plus 175,000. And this is going to be equal to... 254.805. Okay, so <laughs> let's uh, let's do a little bit more math. I'm going to subtract 254.500 from both sides. Um, so I'm just going to subtract 254.500 minus 254.500. And then I get 10,000 H1 is equal to 305. And then 305 divided by 10,000 uh, H1 is equal to 0 0.0305 meters. All right. I uh, hope that all makes sense. I know it was a lot, but sometimes these problems can get to be quite a bit. So double check your work if you have the time. Thanks for watching, everyone.